that I use a wooden base cross and then on top of it, I just put things, flowers, hearts, skulls, whatever. I have photographs of hundreds of hundreds of photos that I take, I document all my work and I'm gonna put it in a, in a um, website so you guys can see the whole thing. Uh, this is another piece that I made. Also, I found this little piece of wood and I covered it with bread dough and a black heart uh, with a marijuana leaf and a skull and I call it La Mota Vive. And it's about just to sell. You know, people, somebody will want to buy this if I show it. Now, um, I'm gonna start officially uh, teaching the class. Um, the uh, bread dough is very simple material. It's just bread and glue, some preservatives because if you don't put some preservative bugs will eat it. There's some type of bug that love to get into the bread and eat it and they will destroy your work. I had a lot of my work being destroyed because I didn't preserve it correctly. So, uh, the bread that you use, I use in this case is bimbo bread that everybody knows. And um, this has to be white bread, plain white bread. The more, uh, the more preservatives it has, the better for us, because um, you know, there will be less chances of bugs eating it. So I'm gonna make just four pieces today four pieces of bread and uh, I will do a heart. There is many, many projects that I would like to do in the future. And um, today is the first one. So the basic thing is doing the doll. And um, first you, the, do, the bread is white and very soft like sponge and it's perfect for these. So you remove the crest. This is the part that we don't mix. It's a little bit too dark and it just doesn't go with the, with the doll. So there's four pieces that we have to be removed and then we're gonna mix it with the glue. Uh, this material is very inexpensive to make this and um, it's very, it's very um, practical to do a lots of different projects. I've done so many things in Bretto and um, I use them for presents, I sell, I add to my artwork, I, it's just incredible. And for the price, because I, I try other products like uh, these artificial dolls that you can mix and do jewelry. I don't know the name of them, but um, they're not as malleable and workable with my hands as they as it is. Uh, Bretto. Bretto has its own characteristics. And I wish you will see Margarita Reza's video and um, where it shows how to, uh, the work she did and the, and the life she had. It was really, really nice. Um, I use glue, just plain white glue, or you can use any kind of wood glue. And then you make a sandwich you let the pores absorb the humidity of the glue, just like that. You have to do this ritual because, uh, or else it becomes hard. So you have to let it breathe the glue through the pores of the, of the bread. And when, after it is like that, we're gonna do the other one. And all you need is about, a spoonful per two 
slice of bread. So this much. And if you need more, you add it. And if it's too much, you add more bread. So you do the same thing, just let her absorb the glue into the pores of the bread. And then you start mixing it. It's very messy, but uh, that's the way to do it. You can use gloves. Also, you can put Vaseline in your hands, which I forgot. I have the Vaseline, but I just forgot. But you can do the Vaseline and you won't have so much problem with the sticking of the in your hands because it becomes really hard to get it off afterwards. So then you do the other one. And um, always after this is mixed and everything is correct, you, you have to put it in a plastic bag and seal it really well so it will last for a while. And you can also put it in the refrigerator and that will help lasting it. Uh, we are um, gonna preserve it after after I clean my hands. Now, I don't know if you guys are doing this with me, just looking. And uh, now it's time to get this off. And when you put Vaseline, it comes out easier, I forgot. But um, I guess I have to wash my hands. And uh, but you try to get it off your fingers as much as you can. It's a little bit messy, but um, that's the only messy part. The rest is a lot of fun. And um, uh, this eventually, you can get it off like that, but it's gonna take me a while. So I better wash my hands. So you're gonna excuse me, I'm gonna go to the sink. Okay, here we are. My hands are washed. And this time I'm putting Vaseline on. You're gonna see the difference. And also it's good to put a little bit of Vaseline even though when we put the color, the color is oil color. The oil that you use to paint, oil paint. And um, the good thing is on in these colors, you can find any colors you want. You can mix any color you want and you can do a lot of things. So um, this helps a lot. Okay, so now we have to make it, we have to make it work. And this is just kneeling the dough for a while. It will give it a very nice texture. It's a little bit, too wet because it's sticking to the hands. After when the, you put the right amount of the, the glue in the, with the right amount of bread, it's not sticky. It won't stick to your hands. And this is still sticking because it has too much glue. 
but you can add some bread and it will become right. I'm gonna put a little piece of bread so it will dry it out a little bit or else it can also dry it on the air. But that will take time. So, Okay, this is a lot better. It's still a little bit sticky. That means that I put too much glue. And also there's different wood glues that they seem to be better. This white glue, I use it because it's white and um, uh, some of the other glues, wood glues have a tint, a yellow tint that it changes the other colors when you try to make just a, a clean red or it comes always that tint. So that's why I use the glue, wood glue, but it's better to use a uh, carpenter's uh, wood glue. And um, uh, it's, pref it's better if you use for indoors. They have a, a brand for outside. It somehow it just doesn't work very well. So this is another way to have a very good doll so you can work. Okay. We're almost there. Okay, this is it. This is how easy it is. Oh, one more, one thing is this. We're gonna put salt. To preserve it. This is going to uh, change it a little bit, the texture but salt helps so the bugs won't, won't eat it. This would be the preservative for the dog. I guess we put like about for every four or five slides of bread we can put a half spoon or a full spoon or of salt. That will be uh, pretty good. And also sometimes if you put too much salt, it becomes too brittle because salt is brittle and, uh, but it's very important that bugs won't eat it. I have pieces that are about 50 years old. Since I came to this country, I made a few pieces and I still have them and never been eaten by bugs. And I have some pieces that I recently made them that I forgot to put salt and they're gone. The bugs can eat the whole thing very fast. So this is it. It's not sticking to my hands anymore. And it's very malleable. So uh, I'm gonna make a heart now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a cookie cutter. This very simple cookie cutters and they have thousands of shapes of cookie cutters that you can do incredible things. Uh, another, uh, for a while in Ecuador, they were doing, a, a, it was very popular. Um, Christmas ornaments and they with cookie cutters, they would cut and make different Christmas ornaments on decorator like this. A lot of color 
and a lot of and a lot of different things and the cookie cutters you can design uh and do whatever and it will look really beautiful you put a glass a gloss finish and it looks very nice okay now uh, i'm going to teach you how to put the color in it and the color is a little bit tricky because um you're gonna again we i'm gonna treat my hands and we're gonna do a heart so i'm gonna make some red i'm gonna use some red paint this it has to go in a in a plastic bag and this has to be sealed very good because it will dry it out right away and uh, this is not exactly it's better if you use saran wrap or the other plastic that you get it i just got a plastic bag for the moment so uh this is the piece of dough that we're gonna color it now if you see when you do this and the and the dough does not crack around here is the perfect dough if you get to do that it's really good i I, the reason why it cracks is because of the salt. When you don't put salt, it's a lot better to work with, but you need the salt in order to preserve it. And um, this is the color that we're gonna use. It's cadmium red deep hue, which is, and you put approximately this amount. Now again, I'm gonna get my hands with full of paint. And also you can do this with gloves. I just not used to using gloves. I'm, I always do like that and I wash my hands and the color with the soap comes right out. And I don't think this is um, really bad for you, the oil paint, because it has a lot of um, colors that are not synthetic. I don't think these colors are synthetic. I think they are um, oxidations for different metals. So, but you have to do it with your hands or with gloves and knead the doll and also the oil or the paint becomes part of the dough and it becomes really, really malleable. The oil makes it even better. And I think some colors, the box don't eat certain colors because they are, they might be poisonous like the blue and some other colors seems like they eat it better. So I, did, I really don't know the chemistry of the colors. You just have to get the color and color everything. Okay. My, you need a lot of strength in your hands and I'm losing it. So. Okay. Um, you can use um, a roller to make for baking and just roll it up. I just, I'm gonna do it by hand. A flat tortilla where I'm gonna get the heart. Uh, this I put too much salt. So um, you can experiment, you know, putting the amount of salt that you like. Uh, but I think it works a lot better without salt. But you need the salt. Uh, you see these cracks? This is no good. This is the salt that be becomes brittle and it cracks because it has, the salt absorbs the moisture 
and it becomes a little bit cracky. Uh, and also remember the bread dough shrinks when it dries and about 33%. So I, uh, later on, I will teach you when you're making designs like this, for instance, you make a, a flower and you wait for the flower to dry because if you glue it right away, it will shrink and it wouldn't look nice. And they look too small and too much space in between. So well, I do the leaves and the flowers and they dry and then I glue them back on the heart. It would be a lot easier with a roller. You always, the excess, you always save it in a plastic bag. And remember to have a very clean surface. Uh, actually, you have to have another place so this glue won't, won't be in here when you need to do what I'm doing. And always, uh, you have to put it in uh, And plastic so it won't dry. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to do is uh, a heart like this. Uh, so you give it the dimension, you just use the, and for that, you use a little bit of water. So if you want to make it look very nice, finish. You just do this, you wet it and you go working on it to give it a, a, a dimension to the heart because it's flat, but it looks a lot better when you, when you work on it and make it look more You see, um, you close if these cracks are because of the salt but um, when you don't put salt it's very very easier to to work with it's almost like clay you know if it cracks you can correct it with water And also you use any tools you want. Okay, now these cracks, you can close in the best with more water. And this heart will be just for the base of flowers. Okay, this is, was a good try. Uh, we're gonna let it dry. When you let it dry, you have to let it dry for a while on this side and then you have to turn it around because if it's, only dries one side, uh, it becomes funny. It has to be, we have to have a lot of control on the drying. So it will dry correctly on both sides. And, um, and this is almost like clay. You can 
smooth everything. See how nice it looks. Sometimes I put water in the water, I put some salt. So, so then I'm putting salt in the very outside and that will also not allow bugs to eat. Because even though the glue is there, uh, I don't know how, uh, what artificial is the glue or if it's practical for bugs to eat it, but they do eat it. Okay, this is hard. You can work and smooth it up as much as you want. And I also have water and do wonders. You can make it very smooth. Okay, that's a heart. Now uh, I'm gonna wash my hands and I, you always go over it and keep working on it and keep, uh, and also when it's a little bit dry, you can, you can also reshape it until it looks perfect. See how smooth and nice this one is? It's just working on it. Now, I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna teach you how to make a skull. In this case, I have a mold that I made. First, I made a skull out of uh, plastiline and then I made a mold on plaster. And um, if you put a lot of Vaseline, the, the bread dough won't stick on it. So I'll be right back. Is it okay, Emily? Okay, now for every color you use, you can color it with um, with any color. Uh, I was gonna make white, but I remember I don't have white. I only brought red color. So I'm gonna make just a, a Bredos call. Okay, I think that's what I need. This is the amount that I need for this size skull. I have to remember to put Vaseline because the Vaseline won't let. Wow, this glue, this uh, dog came out a little bit brittle because of the salt, but I wanted to show you how to put salt in. I think that was a little bit too much, but the more the better. And, uh, and some of the pieces I made that I did not put salt, the, some bugs ate it in a few pieces. That's why I am a little bit scared. So, you make smooth this, this side and press it in the mold. Uh, you can use a brush. I don't have one right now. Um, I am uh, at the studio of Tracy Stone 
and uh, thank, thank to her that she allowed me to use this space for the Zoom class. So we got to thank her a lot for it. Okay, now I'm going to press this in there. You have to press it hard and it always, it cannot be a solid piece of dough because it will, it will not dry. It's like ceramic. The thinner it is, the better it dry, the better it works. So you can, experiment and that's the best part this is just a technique that i'm showing you um, i'm pretty sure you guys are pretty good at it that you're going to come up with a lot of different techniques and different designs and different objects this is just a very a very good media to to do art very inexpensive especially for children children love to do this i did when i was a child and um, um, i had classes to children and they just fall in love with it and uh, it's just a matter i tried to commit to take it to a more commercial form so i can sell and i did very well okay this is the skull it looks a little bit but then you always have to shape it better. I use different tools like this. This is a crochet. This is a perfect tool for bread dough. So look, you enhance the figures. You can enhance the eyes. The nose. I have another tool for the nose. And now I'm gonna use a knife for the teeth. Just let me find my knife. Okay, hold on. I use a spatula. And before that, because uh, when you are touching, you might erase the teeth. Okay. When you have a, a dough without wax, I mean, without salt, it's a lot better, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna make the teeth now. I can also use this. You do in a point and it looks very realistic because I think teeth are pointy in the, in the bone. So you can open the mouth. You can play a lot with it. Okay, you can let it dry and then you can decorate it, paint it and 
add flowers. I, I do a lot of these and I put a lot of flowers on top like uh, Frida Kahlo skulls. I call them and you can see it in my Instagram. I have a few or Carmen Miranda uh, skulls and and also you can use it as these in a different color. I like it black. Uh, so that's a skull. And uh, you can create in a piece of board and some Sempa switch flowers that I don't have the color today to teach you, but it's another project that we can do soon. Uh, and you can put a flowers also. I can do uh, roses. And um, you can see more of my Instagram. I have a, a few more ideas uh, to see how versatile is this material. And um, uh, you just have to be patient and uh, you can do a lot of nice things. Um, I've been doing really well selling these pieces and uh, I try not to mark them up too high, but I have some pieces that uh, these are commercially done or selling, I just wanted to sell, but I'm doing some art. I'm doing a lot of different other pieces and I have very soon I'll put them in a, in a website. You can see what I'm doing, which is one step forward. The, the folk art is art. Okay, so I guess, uh, I don't know if I can answer questions. Can I answer any questions? Um, Michelle? Yeah, so um, tell people to put it in the chat and then I'll leave it here. Okay, if somebody has any questions, I I can barely see you guys because you're very small and I, <laughs> I'm losing my sight. So uh, if you, anybody of you have any questions, you can be, you're gonna be in chat and I can talk to you. So Mahavid's question, um, Sharon wants to know if it's okay to use food color. Oh yeah, it's it's perfect. I you know food coloring is bright, and uh, I was telling you about Margarita Reza. She used only food coloring, and the colors are primary colors that you can mix. They're really bright. They look really good with bread dough, and uh, the color was really intense. It has this special color, but I use oil paint because I'm an oil painter and I have a lot of oils. So it's for me, it's easier to uh, to use them and mix them. But, and also I see that it is less edible for the insects. And uh, of course you just cannot eat it. I think food coloring is more for children, which is, you know, really good. Children, if you give them food coloring, it won't, if they eat it, it won't be, it will be safe. So it's a uh, food coloring is perfectly fine. What about paint? Uh, no, somehow acrylic paint, it clashes. It becomes like cheese. <laughs> when I put acrylic paint, it just becomes really, uh, you can't do anything with it. So don't even try, it won't work. You can paint it on top with acrylic, but you cannot mix it with the dough. Uh, yes, you can experiment. Um, um, I'm pretty sure that any color uh, inks or food coloring, any liquid paint, whether it is water based or whether it is um, oil, the oil, I think it mixes really well because uh, the oil mixes with the dough very well and uh, water too, but acrylic is another formula that doesn't work, but you can use inks. Can it be used for larger pieces? Can I what? Can it be used for larger pieces? Oh, yeah. You can use a larger pieces. I had some larger pieces. The only trick is um, you do it. First of all, you have to remember that it shrinks about 33%. Uh, second is uh, it has to be thin. You cannot be globs of dough. It's like 
clay. Uh, if you do a piece that is too thick, it will crack in the oven. We don't have to put this in the oven. This is just, it's air dry. Um, you wouldn't have to put it in an oven at all, uh, but uh, uh, big pieces have to be thin. I done faces about like that of like dead people with the wound or worms, or you can create a lot of different scary things. And I don't have any pictures of that, but um, I did for a movie, uh, a few faces and though with, you know, with wounds and stuff to scare people, but it was a very exciting thing, but you can do it. It's just a trick to make it thin and it dries really nice. And also the one thing uh, of making faces is that this, you can give it the texture of skin. It looks very much with the skin when it's soft, you roll up an orange peel and the orange peel uh, after it's dry, it becomes smaller, the, the pores that imprinted and then it looks like a human skin. And then you, with color, you can, it looks like it, like a hand, for instance, you can make it look exactly like human skin. Once I did uh, at Sansa, a shrunken head, uh, because I found this hair and I made the head, the smaller head and, and I did the eyes and I put the eyelashes and the and I give it texture and I glue and I stuck the hair in there. So it looked really real. And I told somebody, this is a, a real shrunken head. <laughs> they believe it. <laughs> they were willing to pay me whatever for it. They were really liked the idea, but it wasn't. You know, I told them, no, it is not. I just made it out of bread though. And they couldn't believe it. They thought it was real because the skin, especially this dries out like real skin. Any more questions? You can paint it? Do you ever just paint the surface instead of mixing the colors? Well, uh, okay, I'll show you the difference. Uh, for instance, this piece, I don't know if you can see it. But this piece is not painted. It's, it's the color and then you do a layer of one color and then you two put another layer. You don't have to be painting it. And like these little designs here, it, you can use it with, a, to use cakes to do decorations with a very fine. You can make it a little bit more watery and you can do all kinds of decorations and they dry it out really hard. You put glue on the back so it would stay there forever. And it's like, you couldn't paint these things, you know, you can do a lot of things in uh, 3D, like the flower. This is one color, this is another color, and this is another color. You couldn't do that by painting, but you can paint. If you want, you can paint them and you're gonna do some project that is gonna require some painting. You definitely can paint this and even you can paint it in acrylic or oil or, any other paint it would take. Any more questions? You have to keep working for a while and making it better and better and better. It's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm making it better teeth and um, I guess I don't know if you want me to do another class and I can teach you another step of uh, you know how to do skulls or how to do crafts uh, to sell jewelry um, there's a lot of things and you know that's my ideas now um, Pretty sure you guys are very creative and come up with totally different new things. And these are just traditional uh, Catholic things that I grew up with, you know, it's not necessarily you have to be a Catholic, you can do, it's just very dramatic like this heart and the thorns. And I think it's fun to look at it, you know, and not necessarily has to have a, 
a religious meaning to it, but it, uh, well, it looks beautiful. Uh -huh. Can you demonstrate making a flower? Uh, okay. I'll do my, the dough that I made is not very good for a flower, but I'm gonna try. Okay, I'm gonna do, uh, like the, for the person that was asking me if I can, if you can paint. Now I'm gonna show you a flower like this one right here. Uh, these are painted, but okay. Let me do a, a red flower. I'm gonna make a rose. Okay. So you do the, the first step in a rose is each flower is a different technique. I can make hibiscus flowers. They look really realistic, very beautiful, my hibiscus flowers. But this is the trick in, the, in a rose. So you try to make it, the petals, pinching them really well. As you can see here, this is the inside of the flower. You roll it up. I can make really small ones. See, this is the center of the flower. And then you do the petals. Petals, you take a little piece, you give it in a shape like that. And then the trick is to make a petal, you put your finger here and you pull it back and it becomes a petal. And you do this and petals have a little round thing in here. And I use my saliva to stick it on because you can do it with wood, but wood glue, but I just, you know, it's easier. And, and it works fine as glue. So, can you see? Uh, this this uh, dough is not very good, but the flowers come really well. And um, uh, there's so many different flowers that you can that you can create. And but my favorite are roses, and um, I done orchids uh, and the hibiscus flowers. They come out really nice. Also, another thing that you can do is get a flower, get a rose, and um, dissect it. Take the petals and figure out how it goes and make it very realistic. If you copy the, uh, the way it goes, it's, it's very easy to do. I, I try to make things realistic. You can also come up with flowers that they don't look real. They look just decorative. But I like my roses to look very romantic, actually. And then you can put as much petals as you like. And always you can play with it. Sure, I'll do it right now. Okay, remember these, then these, and then these. Uh, this tool is very good for that. They sell it at the dentist tool. Okay, I'm gonna put more one more petal. Uh, you can see how nice now in these roses what i do um like a lot of roses they have a red inside so i put oil paint inside with a little brush and then i wipe after it's dry of course and then i wipe the petals and they look really 
really beautiful. In this case, I did a yellow with a red, but they look better, the red with a yellow. So that's where the oil paint comes. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put one more petal to complete the row so it will look realistic. Uh, remember a cone shape and you see this, they look very natural actually. Roses are not perfectly done. They have these. And you cut them right here. Just be sure they're together, all the petals in one piece. And you can put more petals, but look how beautiful it looks. And you, if you enhance it with yellow inside, or you enhance the outside with a little bit of white, that will be painting and I'm an artist. So for me, it's very easy to do. But these are samples that left over from the last sale I had before the pandemic. And now I, uh, I don't have good samples to show you, but this is a really nice uh, rose. And this, you can make a few of them and decorate them in the heart, or you can use this and put a whole bunch of, uh, remember these shrink, so you don't put them together. After they dry, you put, another piece that I know how to do is canna lilies. Canna lilies are very easy and they look really beautiful. And um, uh, the next thing, because I don't have any white paint with me today. And um, the next time I will show you to do canna lilies. I will show you to do, um, uh, many other samples uh, I will bring, I have, uh, I will make some more samples and we'll have an, an appointment for another class soon. Any more questions? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. It's very simple. Um, sometimes like in this case, this just, I put glue with a toothpick I put enough glue to catch, be sure it doesn't drip because glue can drip. So it's, you have to be very careful not to drip the glue. Uh, when you put in there, then you stick the flowers and the leaves, these leaves are already dry, okay? And these sempasuchtle flowers, I already, they're already dry. So when I do crosses, I wait for them to dry because if you do them when they wet, they shrink in the cross or whatever you put them, and then they have too much spaces and it doesn't look nice. You can see the glue joints and uh, so it's better to do them. Um, and then you can just, if you need, you put a piece of bread dough, any color you want, or if you want to be dark so it won't be see, you put it in there, put glue underneath, glue on top, and you stick the flower in there. And that way you can put in different levels and, and make them look certain way or whatever with some uh, uh, bread dough. And um, the next time I will bring, you know, things done and ready to put them together and show you, I can do a cross or a skull or something like that. Uh, no, you have to paint it when it's dry. Yeah, if you want to use oil colors, it will be better if it's dry. And if you want to use acrylic colors, uh, it would be better when it's dry, I think. I think it has to be dry. I don't usually paint, but um, uh, occasionally I don't. If I did a mistake in color or something, they, but I use, I use oil paint, it can be clear and transparent that way I make it look nice. And sometimes I to give, I gave um, 
with oil color, I just put everything like antiquing with raw amber with a darker color, and then I wipe off and it looks really aged, um, really old, the piece. And uh, I like that too, and I do in, in a lot of pieces. Uh, this Sempa Suchle flowers, I don't have the yellow to teach you, but next time uh, I can have a class just in flowers, or I can put it together, I don't know, what will be the interest of the people that want, but I have many segments, so maybe I can have many other classes with different, uh, I will be teaching different things. Any more questions? No? Look at this. Uh, I don't know if you can see. But um, just compositions of flowers and leaves. Uh, usually, you can glue these anywhere you want. But um, uh, just put a little piece of dough in here, glue in here, and just stick it the same with it. Just the only thing is be sure it's not going to drip because glue drips and it's very hard to take it off and it looks horrible. Any more questions? Okay, um, I hope you like this. Uh, please let me know how, what else would you like to learn? And I will be soon with you uh, in another meeting and show you another project. This time, it, I just trying to introduce myself with this this technique and uh, kind of show you, you know, the stuff that we can do. And um, I, I've been taken to a very high level. I done some really interesting pieces. I will show them to you, but I didn't want to show them this time because uh, it would be very hard for you to figure it out to do that. It took me for a lot of experience. So uh, this is basically anybody can do it. This is very simple, very easy. And um, I sell it. People love it, and um, it's the most practical way to do, especially for children. You can do this for children already and just let them put it together. You know, you can do all kinds of things. You can do it with cookie cutters and glue them, and, and children love it. Um, another project that I'm doing that I think I like, I'm doing dolls, because originally that's what we did when we were children. We did uh, babies. Um, it wasn't the day when the, there is a day where you uh, celebrate the, uh, the life of children who die when they were young. So they make them in a shape that the Incas, they used to wrap them, they still do. Um, they wrap them and they had all these very colorful uh, textiles. So we did that with bread dough. Instead, we put flowers, we put flowers everywhere with with the textiles, but I, I want to do that. Uh, not babies that symbolize dead children, but I would like to make dolls so children can play with it. And if they break it and they throw it away, it's not a waste of plastic because I think plastic is too much for, uh, for kids. I see everything is plastic and they play for a little bit and it goes to the trash. And I feel really bad. I've been doing some little cars with, with tires. Children can play. If you don't want to play, let them play. You can have them as decoration and they look really beautiful. But, you know, if children play and they break, you can just throw them and they'll go right back to earth. And, um, and I thought toys would be a very nice thing to do. You know, little dolls like, um, I think Mexicans do it out of... Uh, Paper mache. I just recently was at the Museum of Craft Museum in Mexico City, and they have a collection of dolls made of clay and um, and of paper mache. So some of these dolls were made like pre-Columbian era, and uh, I can do the same thing with bread doll. It's just a matter of you know getting together and making them and 
and it will you know if you can sell that and somebody can give it to a child as a present you're not giving them plastic you know because plastic is becoming too much so any more questions okay well thank you very much for your time and i hope you learned something and please stay in touch and um uh, we will see you soon thank you very much <laughs>